the Roman Cinema Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Roman Cinema Podcast where we watch the top movie each week and then we come on here and chat about it. My name is Emma. My name is Wyatt. We just got done watching Minions, The Rise of Gru. Uh, first thoughts? Um, it's fun. It's, you know, it's, it's what the second movie in a row we've watched that... Uh, takes place uh, over a vibrant 70s backdrop so you know it's it's fun it's a it's a fun little movie yeah for sure um that's kind of taking the minions back in time is was kind of a fun twist on um the franchise and the movies that we've seen so far from uh, the despicable me minions you know all the above yeah um but yeah i would say it's just a solid fun kids movie um with you know i think this story takes them to some fun locations with interesting you know set designs quote unquote um and yeah it just makes it a little more interesting yeah under a different backdrop oh yeah the the, the locations are fun and and that's i mean that's kind of how you you keep this uh this train moving is by is by taking them different places, making them do different things, and just you know seeing how kind of weird and and different you can design the, the the characters and just all that stuff. That's how you keep it uh, going. Yeah, and you kind of mentioned you know it was a good movie, but there's honestly not a lot to say about it, and I would have to agree that. Um, yeah, it just was a solid Minions movie. I wouldn't say it's anything revolutionary to the franchise or just in general. Yeah. Um, but I think definitely if your kids or even you, obviously, but um, enjoy the, you know, the se- I don't know what to call it a series, but, you know, if you enjoy that franchise, then I think you would enjoy this movie because it just, it just fits with everything else. Like it's, it's not anything different, but it's also, that's also not a bad thing. Yeah. The Los Angeles Times kind of comments on, um, you know, the movie's plot and everything. So the film directed by, directed by Minions and Despicable Me director Kyle Balda, um, takes us back to the groovy 1970s to understand Gru's childhood as a young person. I'd, idolizing the vicious six a cadre of super villain villains the filmmakers draw from a variety of 70s genre flicks for an aesthetic inspiration i thought that was kind of fun because it makes it fun for the parents and for um the kids alike yeah there was one point where i I forget what character said it but they said you know oh you're like a young don rickles and Gru says who's don rickles and it's like Oh, that's what you know. Most people who are watching this are going to be thinking, but there's those few parents that are going to get it, and so you know they 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 know what they got to do to make that whole thing work. Right, and I thought there was a decent audience reaction. We had a ton of people in there with us, a lot yeah. more than I was expecting. A lot of excitement for for the rise of Gru. Yeah, like audible laughs, and you know, from children and parents. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I mean, yeah, because, like, I you know. Because when you're watching a kids movie and and you know you want to seem all grown up and stuff, so you know you're you you know I'm sitting there watching and you know it's like I'm I'm sitting there nitpicking in my head, but then you hear a bunch of kids laugh at a part and you're like, all right, well they're you know they know what they're doing here, so I'm not gonna sit here and 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 rip on it too much because at the end of the day, you know that target audience they reached and and there was laughs and and it was it was a fun time, so I can't I can't say too much about that, you know. Mm -hmm, For sure. Um, So this movie comes out five years after the last Despicable Me movie and um, 12 years since the first. So Minions, The Rise of Gru extends this animated franchise, Um, which is just wild to me that Despicable Me came out 12 years ago. Yeah, I was thinking about that. And that's weird. It's really weird because I remember when that came out. The movie was awesome when it came out. Mm-hmm. It is still awesome. It is, yeah. Um, I, yeah. 
I mean, though, I really do like all the movies. Like, I love... I thought the soundtrack was so fun, too. Sound, yeah. If there's one thing they always get right, it's the soundtrack. I know for the first, like, two um, Despicable Me movies, they had Pharrell Williams uh, do a lot on there, which mm-hmm. gave us Happy, which is a good and a bad thing. It's good for maybe the first three times to hear it, and then you heard it another hundred times, and then it isn't as fun. But I love Pharrell. And then I'm glad you brought the soundtrack, because obviously there's a lot of, you know, the 70s disco groovy stuff on here. But one of my favorite things about this movie is that there's a rapper by the name of Yeet who is a bit of, of a meme, a bit of a joke, because he, he makes up a lot of his own words, and he sounds very funny. He is on the soundtrack for this movie. Really? Which is crazy to me that he like he's turned down like like these like major hip hop like magazines and publications, but he mm-hmm. said yes to being on the Minions Rise of Gru soundtrack. Yeah. So if that's <laughs> if that doesn't tell you that this movie is worth seeing, I don't know what will. Mhm. Yeah. I mean, and then they had like Funky Town and I just it was fun. It was really cute. Um yeah, the music really elevates these movies, and I think that's what is, a, you know, um, plays a big role in how well the movies do. Yeah. Um, especially in this franchise. Um, I would say, as far as the plot goes, it wasn't super solid, but I think the jokes and, you know, the way that they tied in all these different subplots strengthened it. Yeah. Know? I. Yeah, Michelle Yeoh is in it, and she's wonderful. I wish she was in it more, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, they had they had a story that they wanted to tell. They had a runtime they wanted to fit it in, and it, I never feel like it drags, and I never feel like it rushes too much. I think I think it fits very nicely in this time frame, and it's a nice, comfortable watch. Yeah, and speaking of um, the runtime, it's a pretty short movie. It's under ninety minutes. Um, I believe it runs at eighty-seven minutes. Um, which I don't think any more was needed. I thought it was perfect. Yeah. You know, and I think movies like this, they they can't be that long. You yeah. know, I think the attention span isn't there and <laughs> the plot isn't there to extend it any further than that. So I think they they made a wise decision in yeah. the length of this film. So um, beyond that, the timing of this film is probably just about right for... So it was a delayed release, Um, but it seems to be coming right at the perfect time because Pixar's Lightyear uh, did not achieve the goals that it was intended for a multitude of reasons. I would say it it didn't touch on that comedy aspect of everything, which and yeah, comparing the two Lightyear and Minions, it's like I just had more fun watching Minions like it just it just understood what it needed to do better in my opinion of just you know have fun be fun to watch you know like it was more colorful than the space movie it was funnier than it like and i mean that's just you know that's just my opinion but it, like it just it was more vibrant and it, it it just it wanted to be more fun and it was more fun yeah and i think you know as far as like from a child's you know if you're looking at it, is this a children's movie? Is it not? I would say Lightyear maybe isn't. And it's more for, you know, our generation and even later, you know, looking for that nostalgia of Toy Story. And yeah. I would say that if you're looking for, like, a fun kids movie that your kid is really going to laugh at and have fun with, I would say Minions is a thousand percent the obvious choice. But not to say that Lightyear isn't good for even people our age, like yeah, early 20s, um, who grew up watching the toy, toy Story. Because I was talking to a couple of people who have, I was talking to some people who do have kids, and, you know, right around the 8, 9, when you would start watching Toy Story and actually understanding it. And, you know, kids of this gen, or that generation just don't watch Toy Story. So I think, you know, Lightyear loses some of its luster for kids who don't know the yeah. franchise. Um but Minions is 1,000% relevant within that generation, and I think it does a great job catering towards, you know, the kids in the theater, but then also the parents who come and watch it with them. Because um, I would say there was funny 
not a, like inappropriate adult jokes, but like you said, like with the, you know, with his certain names and stuff yeah. like that, that the kids wouldn't necessarily understand, but the, it hits for the adults. So, um, yeah, so mostly the rise of Gru relies on how visually pleasing and malleable its title and characters are, turning them into a kind of slap happy three stooges of our time. Uh, this is from a CNN review, by the way. Um, animation makes it that much easier to appeal to kids' sillier sides on that score, an advantage of over real life clowns that, alas, simply isn't executed well enough to make them green or even yellow with envy. And I don't know if I necessarily agree with the ending of that, but I'd say like these characters, they can do a lot of different things for a lot of different stories. If that yeah. makes sense. Um, but yeah, would you say that, uh, this franchise warrants another movie after this? Um, goodness me. I mean, I say they go for the saga, they go for nine, three prequels of the Minions, three Despicable Me movies, they already got those done, and then three sequels, I think they go oh for the gosh. Star Wars route. Oh we already gosh. have the Rise <laughs> of movies, so I do feel like, no, I do think they will get another one because there's there's so much, like you said, there's so much you can do with these little Minion guys. You can throw them anywhere, and they'll, and they'll figure out something to do. And so I think... <laughs> I don't know. I I think it's imminent. I think it's probably already in the works. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's my two cents on it, especially with uh, with uh, Illumination. You know, uh, the the way they can get music because this is this is Universal. This is their uh, animation studio, and yeah. so Universal Music Group has rights to a lot of movies. And so the Sing movies and the Despicable Me movies always have great soundtracks because they are funded by Universal, mm -hmm. when they can get you know, that music. And so I think for that reason alone, this is just an easy vehicle to use that kind of stuff and like get those nostalgia hits with music. And I don't think they're ever going to run out of stories to tell with the minions. So I do think, I do think another one is definitely coming. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I would say that like I kind of mentioned earlier, the plot is weakening, but I don't think you necessarily need the strongest plot for this type of film, you know? I think if it's fun, if it keeps things moving, if it's colorful and exciting, I, I don't think you need much else. I don't think it needs to be very deep. I don't think it needs to be that emotional for it to do well and for people to enjoy, have a positive viewing experience. Yeah, it. I think for what they were going to achieve they did it very well they just want they wanted something that you could just sit down and and pay attention to and it doesn't it doesn't try and do anything that it that it doesn't need to and so there's a lot of movies that are trying to do things that they don't need to mm -hmm. there are a lot of movies that are being a little too long and you know it, it, it's hard to keep your attention for all that minion says no 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 we're not going to do the whole two hour movie thing mm -hmm. we're going to give you this nice pleasant Shorter viewing experience. You're going to hear some hits from the 70s. You're going to see the minions slap each other a little bit. And you're going to enjoy it. And you know what? I did. Yeah, exactly. That's a great way to put it. Um, yeah, so any final thoughts on this movie? Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a silly little movie with a bunch of silly little guys. And definitely worth the watch, I would say. It's just... It's just a nice, easy movie to sit and watch and relax. And, you know, laugh a little bit. And, you know, just take... Take an hour and a half off yeah. for a second. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely come out and see that movie. Um, so what else is playing? We have Light Years still here, Top Gun Maverick. You can still see it, which I don't know if you saw. They hit um, over a billion in the box office. Oh, my. Yeah, that's a big deal. Um, Jurassic World Dominion is still here. Elvis and the Black Phone, those both premiered last week. And... Um, both really great options. I loved Elvis. Um, we talked about that last week, and the Black Phone is performing even better than expected. It's um, gonna, yeah, everybody that I know that has watched it has said it's really good. Yeah, so if you're into horror and um, thriller-type movies like that, that's definitely going to be one to watch. But yeah, and then next week we have Thor, Love and Thunder is coming. 
Are, do you have any thoughts on this? I'm excited. I love the direction they've taken the Thor movies. I, I like. I love. I love Thor, and I love his progression as a character because he's he's had movies titled The Dark World and now Love and Thunder. And if there isn't more of a contrast between titles, like I just I love it. Taika Waititi's a wonderful director. Christian Bale's a wonderful actor. He'll be great as Gore, the God Butcher. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited for this one. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's gonna. T- it's gonna. It looks like. It, I mean, from the trailer, it kind of seems like it's gonna be more of a comedy than anything. I think. Yeah, like like a like a romantic comedy in space. Yeah. Is apparently, is what I've heard, mm-hmm. which is, which is wonderful. Yeah, for sure. So a little context of. Um, the movie. So the film finds Thor on a journey unlike anything he's ever faced, a quest for inner peace. But his retirement is interrupted by a galactic killer known as Gore, the God Butcher, who seeks to extinct who seeks the extinction of the gods. To combat the threat, Thor enlists the help of King Vol- mm, Valkyrie. I don't know. Korg and his ex-girlfriend Jane Foster, who, to Thor's surprise, welds his magic hammer as the mighty Thor. Through Together they embark upon a harrowing cosmic adventure to uncover the mystery of the God Butcher's vengeance and to stop him before it's too late. So, um, also, yeah, I was going to say a short movie, but it's 120 minutes, so two hours. (laughs) Um, it's not horrible. Yeah. We watched Elvis. Yeah. But I, I didn't think that felt long. We'll see if this one feels long, but yeah. So any final thoughts before we wrap it up? No, I mean, 4th of July, uh, week Mm -hmm. end then week, you know, good time to see a movie. Good time to, uh, there's fireworks and minions, spoiler alert, but you know, Good, good. T- <laughs> Doesn't spoil. Yeah, anything, well, well, there's fireworks, yeah, so, so there's yeah. So it, I mean, they really did come out at a good time for them. Mm-hmm. They stick with the theme there. Um, <laughs> otherwise, if you're looking for something a little more patriotic, um, Top Gun Still or got Top Gun, baby. I mean, and then Elvis, lots of good music, um, and then yeah, we got some really awesome releases coming up. So, uh, yeah. Anything else? That's all I got. All righty. Well, thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you next week.